All right, guys, in this video, we're going to do the deep dive on St. Catherine's Church in Spring Lake, New Jersey. And um, these are a video from the website, some aerial shots, I guess drone footage, able to uh, get a nice feel for it. And um, I'm going to read some of the uh, information that I collected upon reading the book that was written, uh, it's called St. Catherine's Church, in parentheses, Maloney Memorial, uh, Spring Lake, New Jersey, History and Guide, by the Right Reverend Thomas J. Shahan, D.D., Rector of the Catholic University of America, 1928. Um, I saw online, um, On here, WorldCat, which is um, a website which lists where books are, um, and there is one, two, three, four, five different books on St. Catherine's Church in Spring Lake, New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> so this was the book I read, 1928. Um, but I also gathered information from this book, St. Catherine's Church and Ballingary, uh, the 1903 book by Horace Trumbauer. Um, and that one I got at the Spring Lake Historical Society. I had access to that. But, um, you know, I actually found a sixth book um, <laughs> about it. Well, I'll show you. Um, but... So I thought that was interesting that there was five books on it, and uh, so let's take a look at some of that information again. Um, the church is entirely the creation of a Catholic layman in the depths of his sorrow for the loss of a beloved young daughter who found a pearl of great price. <clears throat> the inspiration to raise in God's honor temples at Catholic architecture. He had a deep Celtic faith. These are just random um, sentences I collected or paragraphs. <laughs> uh, Spring Lake derives its name from the charming lake formed by numerous springs of fresh water. The cornerstone of the building was laid March, se supposedly, was laid March 17th, 1901, and the church was consecrated May 25th, 1902. So that's how long this entire building was constructed, painted, everything finished. All the marble, everything done. Um, the granite found, it has a granite foundation. It has walls of grayish brick. Limestone pilate. Uh, i never really seen this word. Uh, pilasters finely covered capitals, and it's built on an attractive mound. <clears throat> it is a Greek cross in shape. It has a massive octagonal dome roof with copper, uh, roofed with copper, beautiful bronze standards that are 800 years old, which are no longer there, uh, brought from Rome, Italy for lighting purposes. And we're going to take a closer look at those because I have my own pictures and there's a couple good pictures on the internet I found. This unique church was discerned, designed by Mr. Horace Trumbauer of Philadelphia and erected under his supervision. The baptismal font was made by the Puggy Brothers of Florence, Italy. It is constructed of the finest Carrera marble with a bronze cover embellished with ap appropriate emblems of the patron saints of the Maloney family. The high altar, made from spotless Carrera mar marble and matchless Sienese marble. Under the altar is supported on lion's claws, a figure of the Lamb of God described as having a mysterious presence. The, the altar they were describing. <laughs> The everlasting flame lamp of wrought brass was made by the Roman firm of Brugo. The bronze candlesticks were made by Brugo, 
copied from those in the church of St. John Lateran and St. Paul outside the walls, which are both two churches in Italy, Rome. Pius X, I don't know if he was a pope, but he made Marquis Maloney a private chamberlain with the obligation of attending in person at the Vatican whenever he visited Rome. Beautiful marble statues, which are the work of Pugi, a Florentine sculptor, and are finished works of art. There is a massive column, a symbol of power, bearing an inscription in Latin proclaiming the majesty of the law. In the background are represented industry and shipping. Also a cathedral as a symbol of spiritual power, describing one of the, um, that, that sentence was describing one of the frescoes that is wild and has an inscription, Hibernia Sancta Esto Perpetua, a guy with a Masonic symbol and Greco-Roman architecture in the background. We're going to take a look at that exact fresco because I took a picture of it. Um, the Esquire mural paintings are the work of a master artist, Professor Gonipo Raggi, prize graduate of the St. Luke's Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Rome. He also executed the, the arabesque and symbolic decorations of the walls and coffered ceiling. Marquise Martin Maloney spend spared neither time nor expense to <clears throat> procure the very finest designs and an admirable artist to execute them. There is a painting of St. Patrick baptizing the pagan king. The tapestries were designed and executed by Signor Gonipo Reggi. The ceiling of the chapel is modeled after one of the rooms in the Borgia apartments at the Vatican. <laughs> the altar of the chapel is celebrated or anniversaries is celebrated on anniversaries, natal days, and other special occasions in the history of the Maloney family throughout the year. Um, upon Maloney's several visits to Rome, he got close personal acquaintances with four different popes. Leo X3, um, XIII, which I guess is eight. Leo the Eighth, this great pope bestowed upon Martin Maloney his title of Marquis. Um, <clears throat> the stained glass windows are from the justly celebrated house of Mayer and Company from Munich, Bavaria expressly for St. Catherine's Church. The bronze candlesticks and a crucifix made by Brugo, a famous art, um, a famous art metal worker from Rome. Uh, these were a few random sentences I thought were interesting. The Israelites, were, that were from the book, um, the Israelites were bitten by the fiery serpent, our savior before his ascension. Those are two different sentences. I just thought it was interesting that they referred to the Savior and having gone to ascension. It was the stained glass works from Bavaria. St. Catherine was a noble virgin from Alexandria that was kidnapped, tortured, and killed by a pagan emperor. Pope, Surve Pope Sylvester was among the first organ builders. He built a hydraulic organ by the early 11th century. Um, there was the sentence that says, Sacral Portals of St. Catharines. Uh, the organ at St. Catharines was built by H.S. Haskell of Philadelphia. Uh, I didn't look into him, um, but I did look into the architect really wasn't too much information on him. Happy the, corrugate, the congregation that is privileged to call its own this rare edifice, which was a quote by the, um, I guess the congregation, like the people. Um, and these are a few more sentences I gathered. In the old law, the temple of the Jews was more than a mere 
meeting house for divine worship. It was the abode of the Ark of the Covenant, of which we read the cloud covered of which we read. The cloud covered the tabernacle, and the glory of the Lord filled it. Is that referring to electromagnetic free energy clouds that are depicted surrounding cathedrals in the ether and books in the 1500s? I, I would imagine so. And then this is another uh, sentence. In the new law, the Catholic house of the God is the residence of the Lord himself under the appearance of bread. So let's take a look at some pictures I got here. Um, so the first anomaly I want to note is, all right, so let's address the elephant in the room, the bronze standards lighting. So here's a picture of them. Um, here's one of them. They are freaking awesome. As you could tell, um, Insanely intricate, uh, every little where inch of them. We got rams, cranes, um, I said lions, but I, I believe those are griffins. Climb this thing again. Sunflowers and tons of, uh, symbols? No, beads. So, these are apparently 800 years old and brought in from Rome. Um, the, the first thing I think is, wow, that means they had lighting 800 years old. <laughs> because there's nothing else this could have been designed for. They didn't just modify it to hold light. I mean, this was always designed to be a lighting purpose. Um... <clears throat> Now, here is a postcard. Now, this is on eBay.com. This says, postcard from 1901. It's the earliest picture that I can get. And as you can see, those beautiful bronze things that are described in the book as being 800 years old and brought from Rome for lighting purposes are not there. And, and then um, it is just a black wrought iron lighting purpose they are does appear to be lit at at even at that moment um it's just in the daytime um i will note it does look new not not, not new okay the the dome roof has has a, a clear aging and patina there are um, maybe even the roof up here uh, and other parts of this banister area most of this outside appears new and clean, um, and I believe that it is uh, newly fa facaded. These are not brick, um, as I showed you in my previous video. It's just like um, cement with lines cut into it to appear to look like brick. Um, the trees are small, so that would possibly indicate that the ground was recently cleared. Um, and it is on a mound, and it, it is, you know, we, we have discussed all that already. But the first thing is that those lighting standards aren't there. And then we got a picture from 1920, uh, um, it says circa 1911. But either way, um, they're not there, these bronze lighting standards. And then there is one of... That is from 1920, that's what I'm getting confused with, but it's just basically this picture colorized and stupid looking. Um, just better pictures of the uh, uh, postcard. Um, let's see here. So, when I was at the Historical Society, I kind of hinted to the woman that maybe this um, building could have always been there. If there's, because I first thing I asked her was, 
do you have any construction photos of, of this building? <clears throat> she said, no, in her six years of working there, she's never seen any. She'll take a look. And she pulled out, I believe, this photo and a couple other um, black and white images from a folder and a couple aerial shots of Spring Lake. And in every picture, the church was already there and completed. Not all of them, not all the photos were dated, but I'm guessing they were all past 1901. I'm not sure. Um, but at that point, I, I kind of hinted, you know, maybe that it, the, it could have always been there since there's no photos. And that was when she showed me a, well, she pulled out a photograph. Um... And let's take a look. I got some of the photographs. Um, so here's um, an interesting picture from one of the books. It's an event that was going on uh, in 1955. Um, and that's kind of old there. But, you know, that's just how black and white pictures are. Uh, this was another book. Uh, that was at the Spring Lake Library. Um, Meditations on the Stained Glass Windows of St. Catherine Church in Spring Lake, New Jersey. I mean, it was a whole book. Every stained glass that, you know, people gave their interpretation of it. It really wasn't that interesting. Uh, but I didn't really read it all and look through it all. So I, you know, should have. Um, <laughs> here's uh, an image that was provided in one of the books. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be, I mean, yes, this says ground plan of the church. Uh, this is not like a blueprint, and a builder wouldn't be able to do anything from this. Um, you know, this is just a, a kind of a drawing. And the last image, which is one of the frescoes, um, you know, we got the... Masonic symbol, an androgynous character in the center, the architecture in the background, the cathedral, the Greco-Roman. Um, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting fresco to be in there. So many, you know, symbols in it. I didn't go over all of them, but, uh, you know, I guess what I, you know, we'll take, we'll take a few more looks at the last information I have. These are just some of the photocopies I got from the book. Um, the sanctuary is separated from the nave by a railing of Carrera marble with great gates of solid brass richly designed. Uh, this is some sometimes called the altar rail because the altar, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um... Some rare, uh, I mean, some weird stuff. A lot of stuff about uh, Catholic and Celtic, um, as he was very Celtic, they claimed in the book. Um, they got a portrait of Leo VIII and a couple other of his friends. Um, St. Catherine's Church was built during the reign of Pope Leo VIII. Um, gentle figure of Benedict, Benedict X, XV. I'm not good at uh, Roman numerals, sorry. Um, Pius X, Cardinal Gibbons. Here's, here, these are a bunch of uh, modern people. That are in a fresco. So you know, I don't. You know, I don't know. Um, do I think that the building? Mm, it's tough. You know, I. I believe. All right. Here's my verdict. Okay. I'd have to say. That since there is no mention of red bricks 
in the narrative or in the details contained in any of the books or any other of the information available to me. Yet we see red brick where dirt has eroded slightly to reveal the true materials that the building is constructed from. So, I mean, that's that's big in my um, opinion. The fact that there's no mention of red bricks, yet we see them. And, uh, sorry, this is the only way I was able to do this is my uh, old school camera. I plugged it into my TV. We're going to take a look at some of these pictures that I took a few months back of St. Catharines when the bronze standards were still there. And this was still there. They have since, um, as you've seen in my as you can see in my first video, this area has been um, tarred um, and, and actually the dirt was dug out and they tarred this and then cemented on the bottom underneath. Um, but there's still red brick um, and other parts that you can see. Um, you know, there's the facade with the red brick behind it. Um, perfect. You know, there's that that brick is perfect, and that one's a little um, deteriorated. And the red brick is right behind the entire facade. I would I would bet the entire way up the building. You know, there's more. Um, see that that's facade. I don't think that's old world um you know maybe that I, I i you know i can't really tell about everything but you know it's it's aged um symbolism here's some up close of the beautiful bronze standards which i really enjoyed i loved being around um touching feeling they just felt wonderful and that was at the moment when I was looking right here at these sunflowers. I realized that this had to have been built by another people because no construction worker, no foreman is going to say, Hey, those sunflowers, you need 13 petals perfectly aligned. Like, it, it just, we, well, <laughs> it's just a different, different people built this and they didn't have to pay for energy because people who have to pay for energy can't take this much time to build something um here's the cornerstone um looks very new um not as not matching the rest of the building um there's some other uh bricked off archways take a look at uh as I finish off the video, we'll uh, take a look at some of these other pictures I've taken. And possibly, uh, I don't know what that is, maybe some antiquitech up on the roof of a cathedral. There's a there's a, the real door. Um, I think I was just showing behind the wood, there's always red brick. Behind everything, there's always red brick. Even a wood building, you know, that's what I was showing. Even that wood building has got red brick behind it. Uh, this was a church in Long Branch. But yeah, um, I, my, my verdict is that the building was there in Spring Lake, um, but did not look like uh, it did. Like it does now. Lower church. The lower church. Isn't that interesting? This is a, a, you know, a thematic pattern. Love my creamsicles. Um, but yeah. So. All in all. I'd say. They're hiding something. Because they don't mention the red bricks. Uh, I don't think they put all that effort into it and if they did then Maloney is a very connected individual with tons of 
masonry rank and he comes of uh you know he went to the vatican every time he was in italy and so you know i believe he did have some connections and probably did get some fantastic stuff um one, one question is you know how how were they getting this stuff over i guess in 1901 they did have uh, some transportation besides horse and buggy um you know, and they could have done some of this stuff, you know. Um, but then again, you know, we're not looking at the original church, which was also restored in the 1990s. And I don't know what that really means or what they really did in the restoration. But I know they did change quite a bit. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's got a lot of... I, I, get, I guess in the end... I wasn't able to prove anything because it does have more questions than answers. Um, you know, I mean, I didn't, I don't know if this building is astrologically aligned. I am going to try to go there on either the equinox or solstice or some other day and see if I notice anything. Oh, look, there's the bronze standard. They talk a lot about that in that little, in that room is just tremendous. The baptismal font. I, I'm sorry. I meant to say a lot of uh, inscriptions. Look at the ceiling. I mean, what is the point of that? I would imagine the organ, it does have healing power. You know, it, it's an interesting story. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed um, my journey. And uh, I'll definitely be doing more deep dives in local buildings. Yeah, look at that. Uh, it, it's, it's got mud fronted bits. It's got red brick. So, no, I don't believe they constructed the building in 1901 from, and then finished it in 1902. Nope, I don't. Um, I don't know how long they were fixing it up, probably a while. And who knows how we're, how we're going to find that information. But um, next time I go to this building, I'm going to try to get into the dome. So, uh that's going to be the big thing because it's right now it's open and under construction and uh, I think I can get in there. So uh, you'll see another video of, of this church and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for uh, watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.